Before the video starts, I just wanted to mention that I added channel memberships to my channel. If you're feeling generous and you want to support me even more, click the join button down below and gain access to exclusive perks like behind the scene videos and shout outs at the end of all my videos. But yeah guys, thank you for all the support recently, it does mean a lot and make sure you're subscribed because I have an awesome new montage coming out next week and I really think you guys are going to like it. So recently I've been seeing a lot of comments under my videos asking for like my render settings, my recording settings, my in-game settings, my crosshair and all of that so I decided to make a all-in-one video giving you literally all of my settings, Valorant, uh, Nvidia settings, render settings, uh, game filter settings, recording settings, pretty much everything that you guys have been asking for. All right, to start it off, I'm gonna show you guys my Sony Vegas settings. That includes my project settings and my render settings. As you can see, this is part of the video that you guys are watching right now. So jumping into my project settings, here we are. 1920 by 1080, 60 FPS obviously, uh, resample mode on disabled, and that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy here, just you know, basic stuff, um, audio right here, I haven't really touched any of this other stuff besides, uh, make sure if you're recording in 60 FPS, obviously you want to have it at 60 FPS, 1920 by 1080 is fine, and then make sure you have resample on disable. So yeah, jumping into the render settings right here, I do render in 1440. Even if you record in 1920 by 1080, I would definitely recommend rendering at 1440 because it'll look way better on YouTube. Obviously we have 60 FPS. Um, if you're recording in 30, then you would choose 30, obviously. Uh, variable bitrate at 50,000. And code mode, this is really important. Uh, NV encoder, I think this is only if you have an Nvidia card, but I'm not too sure. But if that's there, then you definitely wanna put your encode mode on NV. RC modes, constant bitrate will give you better quality. Audio, 48,000 sample rate and bitrate 192,000. Uh, and then all of these other settings I don't check uh, or change except for this one, video rendering quality, you wanna put this on best. And that's that's pretty much it guys. Other than that, the important things to make sure you have is NV encoder, CBR, 60 FPS and 1440. So yeah, those are my render settings. Wait, why did this change? This should be 50K. Yeah, so these are my render settings, and yeah, I would definitely recommend using these if you're new to Sony Vegas, or just overall, it's just really good render settings, and that's why my videos look so good. You guys are also probably wondering what that motion blur kind of smooth effect is, and that's just called RSMB, so if we search RSMB right here, it's going to take a second to load, but it's pretty much a add-on that you can um, add to Sony Vegas, or a plugin rather, and I'll put a link in the description down below on how to get it. Um, it should be pretty easy for Sony Vegas and After Effects. I pretty sure it's all the same um but yeah it's rsmb and i'll give you my settings for that as well so if you want to copy down my rsmb settings these are the settings that i use for blur amount uh, i put 0.44 same with uh, foreground foreground and background blur amount 0.44 and then main background i do 77 and that's literally it so i'll add this um to my track effects here because then every clip on the track are automatically has it and it's easier than you know adding it individually on every clip but yeah, if you want to pause the video, these are my RSMB settings. And like I said, I'll put a link in the description down below on how to actually get RSMB. All right, guys. So moving into my Valorant settings, I'm going to start off in general. My sensitivity in game is 0.47 and my DPI is 800. Bit of a higher sense, but I've noticed higher senses kind of become the meta, at least in my opinion on Valorant because of everything that's going on and people flying across your screen like that. But I'll go down, uh, kind of going through the important settings. Enemy highlight color on yellow. Uh, scope sense on one, uh, mini map settings here. You can see all of it right here. Nothing really crazy in here. Um, pretty standard, I would say. Moving on to controls, I'll show you guys my binds. The only thing different in here is I have jump on mouse wheel down as well as space bar. Um, and then equipment, I'll show you guys my scope settings right here. Um, and then my ability settings right here as well. And pretty much all the binds that I have. Um, Kind of weird, but these are the settings that work for me and it'll be different for everyone. So just kind of use whatever feels most comfortable for you. Communication doesn't really matter. Interface also doesn't really matter. Uh, and then moving on to the crosshair. So the crosshair that I'm using right now is uh, right here, Interlines 1422. It's like a very, very basic crosshair. You guys have been asking a lot about the black crosshair that you see in my videos, the small little dot. So if you want to use that crosshair, I'll show you really quick how to get that. So outlines on, um, interlines, 
completely off. Same with outer lines. And then we have center dot on at thickness one. Now this is a really, really small crosshair and it's actually white, but it looks black in my videos just cause you can't really tell because it's so small. But yeah, this is the crosshair that you guys always have been asking for. And I would only recommend using this crosshair. Like if you're new to Valorant, I definitely recommend using a bigger crosshair or a medium sized crosshair at first. This crosshair is more directed for people with like really, really precise aim and if you have a higher sense especially it's gonna be really hard to use this crosshair um, and for spraying and stuff like that so like I said if you have precise aim then you can try it out um, I'm not using it right now I may switch back to it but this crosshair actually I've gotten a lot of clips with it and I actually really like this crosshair and I probably will end up going back to it but yeah just wanted that clear that out because all of you guys have been asking what is that black crosshair you use and you know this is it it's just literally a very very small dot with uh, outlines on Moving on to the video settings. Now this is probably the most important part of like the graphic settings at least. Um, full screen obviously, 1920, I play it native. Uh, 240 hertz, letterbox, uh, doesn't really matter. I have all of these at off and I have Nvidia reflex low latency at on plus boost. If this does affect your performance, I would just keep this at on, but this is a really important factor in keeping your latency down um, and your just responsiveness overall with your game. And I. Notice it does make a big difference. So putting this on plus boost is, well, you'll definitely notice a difference with that. Moving on to graphics quality, I have everything on low or off except for bloom. Bloom is what makes um, skins look a lot better. So I keep this on for the purpose of just videos. But if you're not playing on recording or doing any of that stuff, then I would just keep this off. But other than that, yeah, everything low. Sometimes I play with it all on high, but most of the time I just keep everything on all low. And then moving on to stats, uh, I just have my FPS on, doesn't really matter. And audio settings also doesn't really matter, it's completely preference. Um, this always, I notice this always resets, which is kind of annoying, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much all of my settings for uh, Valorant. Yeah, I just wanted to hop into a custom game real quick and show you guys the render latency and game latency I get. So as you can see in the top left, I have a really low render and game latency. You want to make sure this is as low as possible because this will make a big difference, you know, especially at higher ranks when everyone's kind of at the same playing field and you're trying to min-max everything. Um, you'll definitely win a lot more gunfights and stuff like that and it will feel a lot more responsive, you know, the lower MS you have. It'll depend also, wait, let me pause the match timer real quick. It'll depend also on your specs, obviously. So if you don't have, you know, crazy specs, don't expect to get like a really low latency like this. But if you have decent specs, then you want to try to aim for something like this. It will make a big difference. Trust me, guys. Next, we have my recording settings and what software that I use. So the software that I use is NVIDIA Shadowplay. Anyone with NVIDIA graphics card is able to use this software. Now, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, I would recommend using OBS. That's probably the next best thing or even better in some people's opinion, but it's really preference and I've been using NVIDIA Shadowplay. So if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you want to make sure that you obviously have GeForce Experience downloaded. This is also where you update your drivers, but you just head into the settings uh, tab right here and right here you want to select in-game overlay and turn that on. Now, once that is on, you can press Alt Z to get into the uh, settings window and how to configure the video and uh, capture settings so hopping into my video settings right here these are the settings that I use 1440p 60 FPS uh, max bit rate and then I replay at two minutes now this is really important um, obviously if you want a smaller file size you can drop this down to about a minute but if you're playing a game like Valorant then on average a round isn't gonna go past two minutes so if you put it on two minutes you know that if you press that button you can capture pretty much everything that happened in the previous round and that's why I really like it, but yeah, pretty simple stuff here. I would recommend recording in 1440 even if you are playing in 1080, like I said before, it just makes the quality look a little bit better. And then hopping into the audio settings here, another thing that you guys ask is how do you separate the audio track? So right here in the audio settings, you could just select a button literally right here to separate the audio tracks, which is really nice because it separates your voice from um, your desktop audio. So. If you're like me and you have like an AC or a fan going and you don't want, you know, your mic or that volume to come into um, your videos, obviously you can easily separate that here, which makes it really, really nice. And that's also a really big reason why I use NVIDIA Shadowplay for this feature right here. But other than that, that's pretty much it. The rest of the settings, you can tweak how you like. Um, and then going into the keyboard shortcuts, uh, it's pretty simple. So right here you have the toggle instant replay. So this is what turns on the replay system. It doesn't capture it, but it turns it on. And then to save the last two minutes or however long you chose to um, set it to, you just press this key right here. 
and then there's manual recording as well but i just use shadow play like i said pretty simple stuff and it's a really really good software it doesn't tax your performance very much at all and it's overall just i really like using it and i'm going to keep using it and finally, I'd like to show you guys my NVIDIA settings because this can help a lot with performance in game and latency. So if you wanna change these settings, just right click your desktop and click NVIDIA control panel right here. Starting from the top, you wanna make sure that you have use advanced uh, 3D image settings and these are the advanced 3D image settings. So I'm gonna go slowly through the important ones here. Um, I have anisotropic filtering at 8X. This is what makes skins kind of more detailed. So I like to have that on to kind of, you know, makes the game look a little bit better. And for creating videos and stuff like that, it looks a little bit better. Besides that, a few important settings are low latency mode. Some people play with this on ultra. I just have this at on. I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but I definitely recommend having it at least on on. Max frame rate, don't want to limit that. Better, the more frames, the better in a game like Valorant. OpenGL rendering, I have that on my graphics card. Power management mode, prefer highest performance. Um, Texture filtering quality, high performance as well, V-Sync off, and yeah, you can just copy these settings, pause the video like I said, um, and yeah, I use these for all my games, and I'd say they're pretty good settings. Uh, moving down, uh, physics settings, I would put this on your graphics card, unless your graphics card isn't the best, then I would just leave it at auto, but if you have a good graphics card, you definitely want to make your physics settings uh, selected on your graphics card. Down at resolution, like I said, I play on uh, native resolution, 240 hertz. You wanna make sure this is at the highest refresh rate for your monitor. Uh, color settings, I just have digital vibrance at 100. Obviously, it makes the game look a lot more vibrant and colorful. Um, didn't change anything in here. Didn't change anything here, nothing here. Size and position, again, this is preference. I've heard that no scaling gives the best uh, latency and less render latency, so I have it on no scaling, but it's preference. If you have it already on something, I wouldn't change it. Um, performance scaling on GPU override, like I said, native 240 hertz. G-Sync off. Some people prefer to have this on, but if you're getting more FPS than your monitor refresh rate, I would just keep this off, especially like in a game in Valorant. There's no point to have it on, really. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much all of my NVIDIA settings. I would definitely recommend tweaking this part because some of these settings can give you a lot higher FPS and lower your latency. But yeah, guys, those are all of my settings. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I look at all the comments and I'll respond to any of your guys' questions. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. Like I said, I have a lot of videos to come, a lot of new stuff. I know I've been doing a lot of montages and my channel is kind of revolved around montages, but I'm going to be expanding out a little bit and doing some other stuff. So make sure that you're subscribed. You're not going to want to miss any of these videos. I'm telling you guys. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.